Hey Explorers, this is GOB for Learn Around the World's Geo Show. And if you're watching this in the future or if you're watching this slide and you're new to our programming, uh, we're an educational uh, virtual expedition. So that means we are traveling for 12 weeks through Central America and we're making all sorts of cool content like this broadcast, videos, virtual field trips, all kinds of cool stuff for classrooms. Uh, if you're a teacher, student, uh, I'd love if you shared it with one of your colleagues or peers, or if you're not, just follow along and have a great time. So we're currently in Tulum, Mexico, and it's a pretty nifty, unique town, and I'll, I'll explain why in just a minute. Uh, however, this week we do have our virtual field trips. So every two weeks we do a round, a new round of virtual field trips. And our virtual field trips this week are on the natural uh, wonders of Southeast Mexico. Now we can't cover them all, but we have some cool ones that we're going to show you. We've been putting together videos and, and all sorts of content over the last week and a half now. And we're getting ready to start sharing those on Wednesday. And because of that, we're doing a lot of editing. So I've been unfortunately stuck in a hot room, no AC. It's like, you, I don't know if you can tell, I'm sweating pretty bad. I have my uh, handkerchief right here to keep the sweat off of me, but um, it's kind of a little bit cool in the shade. It's around 90 degrees or so, uh, pretty humid. If you're not familiar where Tulum, Mexico is, it's about an hour and 45 minutes south of Cancun. So that gives you an idea. It's, it's pretty intense, the, the heat. When you're out in the sun, we're closer to the equator. Wear your sunscreen, guys. Always important. Um, and so the sun is pretty intense and it can burn you. So uh, it's hot inside and out, uh, unfortunately. So a little bit about Tulum. So Tulum, like I said, because of its proximity to Cancun, I'm gonna show you what's going on kind of on the streets right now. All right, so here's the main road that kind of comes through uh, Tulum and if you go look at it on a map basically uh, the beach is this way and between here and the coast is uh, part of the Tulum uh, Park, the National Park because just uh, a ways down here and one of the reasons we're here is because of the strategic location to Mayan ruins and there's a very important or famous Mayan ruin of Tulum that is just down this road uh, right on the coast or right on the beach and it's one of the unique uh, ancient Mayan cities because it was right on the coast and you'll learn more about that when we do our Mayan show um, but cool thing back to Tulum so Tulum because of the proximity to uh, Cancun it's a very touristy place now not quite as touristy as Cancun uh, I wouldn't go there personally um, but like you can see here, lots of uh, lots of crafts and different kind of souvenirs that they sell along the street, and I'll go show you some in a second. But as we walk around, notice uh, when we see some of these restaurants, there's no really locals that you'll see uh, in the restaurants. It's it's mostly foreigners that you see there, and it's one of the unfortunate sides to tourism to a lot of places. Yes, it does bring outside money into local economies but it kind of depends who owns those businesses. Does that money stay there? And this was the lesson we learned last year during Geo Show season one in Ubud, Bali. Uh, we learned that none of the Balinese could afford to stay right in town any longer because of the high prices with the restaurants and, and all the money that was there to be made. So it's one of the, it's a double-edged sword of tourism. Yeah, you can bring in outside money to your local economy, but at what cost? Uh, is that to the average Joe. So if you own a restaurant, it's a good thing. Uh, if you're not in the tourism business, it could be a bad thing for you. Uh, so if you're popping in and watching this, uh, we're an education program and uh, because I wanna keep it clean on here, you need to follow me in order to comment and, and I need to follow you. Um, so I had that restriction on here. So if you follow me, I'll follow you back and just uh, keep your comments clean on a short walk around just to kind of show you what's going on so as I said it's a it's a beach community so you'll see a lot of uh, beach goers and bites we'll go look at some of the souvenirs but if you
So lots of textile work and you'll see a friend up here, Frida Kahlo. So we learned about her uh, a couple weeks ago on Geo Show. Lots of uh, Luce Libre masks, uh, Ali Hebres there. So a lot of the bead work, uh, textiles. So we learned about all these uh, during the first expedition topic of Geo Show, which was Mexican culture. And you'll find us here everywhere that, you know, people trying to sell you things uh, right on the street. And got another set of restaurants. And we're going to go, we're going to, let me get off this main road because all it is is restaurants and people selling souvenirs. So, past this pharmacy. So there's a pharmacy uh, here. You can pretty much go in and buy, uh, pharmaceuticals you don't really need uh, too much prescriptions from my understanding uh, I think you do on on some things but uh, you can see there's a lot of construction going on so building hotels and and it's interesting the further that we get off of the main road the more kind of discrepancy you'll see in and how nice the, the homes are. Um, again, this first block right up the main road, and this is about everywhere that I've been here, is just restaurants, and then you get into more residentials. So most homes have, they're kind of walled in and have some type of gate on them. Uh, either a gate or the actual door or windows. So I was asking someone here and they said that the, uh, that the rainy season, so when it starts raining, it for about two weeks it just rains straight through and then it's kind of off and on for uh, a couple months and they said that starts around July. Uh, we've had a couple of evening showers since we've been here, uh, but nothing too, too bad. I ran into some people that just came from here and they said they had really bad rains, uh, rainstorms while they were here. I'll kind of walk around the block, but here you can see there's more local kind of places to eat. So as we come up on the, there's a pretty cool mural up here. But if you're following the program, this week's culture challenge is music. So our culture challenge is weekly and it's your opportunity to share uh, what's happening in your own local culture. Uh, on Geo Show right now, we're in Mexico, so we're sharing all about Mexico. But it's your opportunity to share uh, if you're in Argentina or the U.S., what kind of music do you listen to? Uh, what's popular? Is there any kind of traditional local stuff uh, that you would like to share? If you do that at hashtag GeoshowCC, so the CC is for Culture Challenge. And whoever shares the most is random. So the more you share, uh, the more it's weighted, and you can win a prize pack at the end of the week. So we've already sent out three so far. So if you'd like a chance to win one of those, um, I'm gonna switch this around so you can see this mural. It's a pretty cool mural painted here. So there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, they use a lot of colors, but if you remember when we were in Oaxaca, not as many like bright colors like 
uh, like you, there's a orange down there and there's blue here but when we were in green when we were in Oaxaca it was just like every home was just popping a bright color and the interesting uh, thing we learned about at Oaxaca is when you see a lot of the Mexican textiles so like the rugs that are really popular or even the ponchos I've never, uh, which makes sense, but a lot of those patterns that they use come from uh, their respective indigenous uh, people that were in that area. So in Oaxaca, for example, they had the uh, Zapotecs, uh, which were a lot of their, uh, their uh, structures is what they kind of take a lot of those designs from. So, let's see, it's backlit. You can see that van that's turning there. Okay, so that's called uh, Colectivo. And Colectivos are like the local uh, system for local bus system. And so they're super cheap. You can get cabs or you can get big buses uh, to get around. There's a, the trash bins, they're just grates to throw your trash in. Some dune buggies up here. You can kind of see the, uh, here's actually a stop for Collectivo. And there's some times there. So like a Collectivo, and it's funny, like the, the cab drivers, they'll try to tell you that they don't run to certain places, but they do. Um, and that's what most lo the locals use is Collectivos. Uh, super cheap, you kind of just wave them down. Uh, you don't have to be at a bus stop. You can just wave them down and they'll stop and you jump right in and tell them where you want to go. Now, they do only uh, stick to certain routes. So that's the only thing is you can't get them to go uh, to a custom destination. Um, that's it for this kind of just walk around in Tulum here. I'm about to go back in. You see that green place behind me? That's where I'm staying. And it's really hot in there because it's hot here. And so we have to go do some editing for a virtual field trip. So if you're just popping in and you don't know who I am or what Geo Show is, it's an education program. We're currently in Mexico and we do virtual field trips, live broadcasts, all sorts of cool stuff to learn about local cultures uh, all over the world. So this is our last week in Mexico. It's our fourth week we've been here. We've learned so much so far and we go to Guatemala next. So we hope to see you in Guatemala if we don't see you the rest of the week. Uh, remember, share your stuff on Cultural Challenge and you may win a package from me from Mexico for your classroom.